I think it's important that people should recognize, as I said yesterday, that the fact that we took the negotiations to the wire as we had to, to be clear on the fundamentals, meant that Spain actually had very little time to administratively contact the European Commission yesterday before the breakup. In fact, I know that there was almost no one in the Berliamont building when the agreement was sent in by the perm reps in Brussels. In order for the Commission to be able to grant permission for the Gibraltar ID card to continue to be valid for travel purposes in the European Union after midnight last night. And so what is happening is that Spain is seeking that consent. And until that consent is given by the EU, which Spain is seeking, it is not possible for a British national to enter the European Union just with an identity card, which is no longer recognized by the European Union. So for that reason, Spain are advising that people should have their passports with them in case they have a problem in Spain for whatever reason or further in Europe if they're flying through Malaga airport so that they can document themselves in a way that is currently accepted to the European Union. You say you mentioned it yesterday, but was it unexpected? One thing is this is what should happen, and the other thing is what we expected to happen. No, no, I fully expected this. The, we had a, a briefing in detail between the United Kingdom, Spain and Gibraltar on how matters would be handled during the course of today. Um, and the highest uh, representative of uh, the Ministry of the Interior uh, insisted that this was the best way to cure the problem. In other words, use the Gibraltar ID card to show residents in Gibraltar the British passports to be safe in Europe. Remember that at the moment, British citizens are not permitted to enter Spain from the United Kingdom unless they are residents of Spain. And so for Gibraltar, the position is different. And the way to accredit that you are a G resident of Gibraltar in the best possible way is with the Gibraltar ID card. And for that reason, we are getting access that you wouldn't get if you arrived as a British citizen, not resident in Spain, into one of Spain's airports on a flight from the United Kingdom. So this is exactly what we expected. We were just not clear whether or not Spain would be able to get the consent at the last minute yesterday. It hasn't been possible. And of course, Spain has Schengen obligations. We have to recognize that um, and needs to ensure that it's complying with European regulations, although they are seeking to get that changed by the European Commission as soon as possible. An interesting irony that uh, the issue today at the border, at, as we expected, is not actually Spain. It's the European Commission, but not for long, I hope. You've mentioned empty offices, and of course, that's a problem that you've had with these negotiations now. It's Christmas, and I'm, I'm going to quote Boris Johnson. We've done Brussels, now let's get on with the sprouts. Yes, indeed. Well, um, I must tell you that I uh, I had my my sprouts, um, but casi se me as I had to rush to continue the negotiation um, on every single one of the days between the Christmas break. And I'm just happy that I was able to gulp my grapes down without having to think of running back to a video conference. But what effect has this had on negotiations and on things now that it is a festive period, um, things are, have slowed down? So it, the effect has been not so much on the negotiations because all of the negotiators knew that we needed to ensure that we continued. It has been um, on the aftermath of the negotiations, the implementation. So this could take, what, what do you think, a couple of days? I expect that in the early part of next week, we shall be able to get certainty from the European Commission in a decision. Um, that the Gibraltar ID card should be still uh, available for travel in, into the European Union in this period of negotiation. It'll be for a short period. Well, you've got, um, you've had a good night's sleep, I, I would imagine. What happens now? Where do we go to now? Well, I, I managed to get to bed at uh, 3 a.m., having done um, the, the usual Gibraltarian New Year. Um, inside the home, of course, uh, but I was up for a Today program interview um, by seven. Um, and uh, if you will excuse me, I think that there is still a lot to do. There is still a lot of washing up to do in order to put in place all the things that we would have done in slower order if we had been able to finish these arrangements earlier. Um, we had to go to the wire because we would not cede on the fundamentals. Um, and I'm proud that we did that. And I'm proud that we did not sacrifice that for the sake of expediency. The things that you're seeing happen at the border today are relatively minor in the context of what we hope we have achieved and will be able to see in effect during the course of the 
second part of this year once we finish the treaty negotiations but the treaty negotiation now becomes the key function what we have agreed in the framework will mean nothing if we cannot agree a treaty and indeed what we put in the treaty is what will as we say in in, in gibraltarian parlance what will go to mass and that's what we have to ensure we get right how confident are you of that treaty becoming a treaty well, I think that the, the duck has been broken. I think that the things that needed to be said, which the Spanish government might have found uncomfortable in Spain, have been said. Um, and I think that, therefore, it is very likely that we will uh, have this treaty. I never think that anything is a certainty. I know that Gibraltar has to fight for everything. We will fight for this, too. The attacks on the Besoya for having done the deal are there. But also, I must say, I think that the view that people now have uh, in Gibraltar and in Spain and the rest of Europe over the opportunities that open up in this part of the world and not just economically, which we sometimes think about so much, but socially at a human level. I think really that has captured the imagination of people and I hope that will propel us to a good treaty for Gibraltar, for Spain, for the United Kingdom and for the European Union as a whole, but in particular for Gibraltar and the Campo de Gibraltar. Chief Minister, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you and to everyone listening on Radio Gibraltar, wherever they are in the world.